so let's let's jump on to capacity planning so how do we plan the capacity of our uh, you know uh, of our this thing uh, for cassandra cluster so there are two aspects to it user data size so how do you estimate the user data size your application data size because if you have one terabyte of application data to be stored there will be some overheads above you know that one terabyte of data there might be some indexes that may take more time i mean more space right so we we will discuss various overheads so there are various overheads that are there so we'll i will discuss in detail and then there's something called usable disk capacity so as we discussed as we discussed earlier what will happen is disk they will need some extra space to do kind of some internal processes so all of the disk space all of the disk capacity is not actually available to the end user so all of the disk capacity is not usable so we have to calculate the usable disk capacity first right so there are certain factors that you have to consider like uh, as i said the uh, various operations happening on the disk the various internal processes to uh, have uh, happening on cassandra cluster with that will also take some space right so let's take an example of compaction compaction will also require some space extra space to basically do some kind of processing so we will discuss in detail in the next slide so how do we compute usable disk capacity and user data size so let's come to usable disk capacity calculation so how do we calculate usable disk capacity is so first you calculate your usable disk space it is the row capacity that you will calculate what will be the row capacity so okay so 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 just just, just hold on so first thing will be you will calculate usable disk space per node there are certain consideration that you need to do while calculating usable disk space for a particular node and then you basically multiply it with the number of nodes to get the total usable disk space across the cluster i mean it's very simple it is i mean since you calculate for one node and assuming all nodes are same the cluster is homogeneous in that case you will just multiply with number of nodes and it will give you total usable disk space so how do we calculate usable disk space per node uh, we will discuss now okay so this is uh, a a small you know formula or let's say small uh, like various considerations that you have to make while considering uh, while calculating usable disk capacity so let's assume there is a raw capacity so how do we calculate raw capacity is you have disk size let's say you have 1 terabyte of disk size and you have five different disks on a single node you have five different disks and you have each disk has 1 terabyte of size okay so the raw capacity will will, uh, will be nothing but the total total capacity which will be 5 terabytes okay so as you said uh, there will be some formatting uh, some some internal processes happening on this that will take some space so we assume in generally uh, you know it takes around something around 10% of space so we do a kind of a discount of 10% on the actual raw capacity so we say out of 5 terabyte 10% will be uh actually you uh, used towards the various i oper i operations like formatting overhead and all the stuff it will be used for so we will deduct 10% from the raw capacity for these kind of operations now if you deduct 10% what is the left over left over will be 90% right so raw capacity into 0.9 will give you 4.5 terabyte okay so raw capacity is 5 5 into 0.9 will give you 4.5 terabyte so this means out of 5 terabyte of space out of 5 terabyte of raw capacity you can only make use of 4.5 terabytes because there is a discount given because of the other overheads okay and now coming to cassandra part so in cassandra there are lot of processes running like compaction so how does compaction run is if you have set of four ss tables right if you have set of four ss tables and is trying to compare is trying to uh, merge those four ss tables then it will create a new ss table first okay it will merge the data from four ss tables to that particular ss table so sometime in uh, some point in time you have a scenario wherein you have the four ss old four ss tables and we have a new ss table existing coexisting at the same time right so it will some at some point in time it will need more space right so for 
that kind of operations we res we reserve 50% of total available disk so the 4.5 terabyte was a formatted disk space 4.5 terabyte was the disk space that was available we will reserve 50% towards cassandra internal operations so the 50% will be 2.25 so if you see out of 5 terabyte of raw capacity only 2.25 terabyte is actually available for your application data everything else either has to be formatting discount or it has to go for some cassandra internal operations so while planning you have to consider all these factors so if you say okay your application data is 5 terabyte you have to go from you know like it it, it will be then in, in that case it will be a bottom up approach okay you okay 5 terabyte is space then i have to give a formatting uh, i have to give a cassandra you know, I have to give space for some Cassandra internal operations, so it will become 10 terabyte. So 10% I have to reserve for, uh, you know, uh, for uh, formatting overhead, it will kind of become 11 terabyte, right? So, so to store 5 terabyte of application data, you will need 11 terabyte of total raw capacity.